Okay, so first of all, here are our um, ingredients. We have some liquids and we have some solids. Um, so we have our grape seed, our castor oil, our coconut oil, our shea butter, which I get in a bulk block there, our tallow, which is all grass fed, and then our um, olive oil. <clears throat> and then over here, we have everything ready out. That is our tallow and our olive oil. This is our grape seed. Uh, that's our lye. And then this is our castor. Actually, I think that's the grape seed. The other one was the castor. Uh, this is the coconut oil. Uh, it is very hot and humid here, so the coconut oil is actually liquid today. Um, so that is, we don't even have to melt that down. So, and then we have our goat milk. So what I do with the goat milk is we freeze it in the silicone molds. Mine just happened to be these cute little paw print molds. Um, so those are solid uh, in the freezer, at least overnight. And then we're gonna get started. So we'll be right back. All right, so we are back and we are going to do the lye goat milk mixture. So this is 4.3 ounces of lye and 12.9 ounces of the goat milk. So the lye really heats up when you add it to um, anything liquid. So the goat milk can actually scorch. So that's why we freeze the goat milk. So as this chemical reaction happens, um, it doesn't heat up the goat milk and scorch it. Um, this method has worked really great um, for me. So just sprinkle a little bit on. I have my gloves on. I have my safety goggles, which are my glasses on. Uh, lye is very caustic, so you don't want to hang your head over top of that while it actually is doing its little uh, reaction there. So sprinkle a little bit more. Try not to splatter that anywhere. Just gently get that stirred into the milk cubes, like so. And they are gradually going to melt as the lye changes into its chemical reaction. And we just keep sprinkling and getting that mixed down. You can see it's starting to melt. And you can see the bottom there starting to melt down. So we're gonna get the rest of this in here. And we just stir this until it's well incorporated into those milk cubes. And I'm probably just gonna set this aside, go to the next step, and then I just keep coming back and stirring it. All right, so let's move to our next step while this finishes. So we have our, our our tallow and our olive oil. So the tallow or the lard is 12 ounces. The olive oil is four ounces. To that, I'm gonna add my shea butter. And that is, oh, sorry, cocoa butter. Um, so this is two ounces of cocoa butter. I just cut it in smaller chunks so the melting goes a little bit easier. So add that in there. So you can either put this on a double boiler in the on the stove, or you can put it in the microwave. I'm gonna go pop this in the microwave just to make it a little bit quicker. And we will be right back. All right, we are gonna move forward 
these are almost equal in temp. Um, we have about 80 here and our fats are about 88. So close enough in my book. Uh, so now what we're gonna do is mix our lye solution into our uh, fats. Um, so never do the opposite way. Always put that into there. And you can pretty much just dump this all in at once. Just like that. I like to use my silicone spatula to get everything out of there. And again, you're still going through that chemical process. So make sure your gloves are on, make sure your goggles are on and make sure you're in a well ventilated area. Um, so give that a good stir. As you can see, those white fatty lipids on top are already mixing in nicely. So once that is done, now we move to our immersion blender. Um, so I'm just gonna have to turn this a little bit because our cord doesn't reach quite all the way over there. So this is gonna go to the corner here. There, I think that's a good view for you guys. There we go. Okay, so that's well mixed with our spatula. So we're gonna um, attach our immersion blender. And what you do is just blend it. If you wanna tap, make sure there's no air bubbles. And then you're going to blend it for about a minute. And you're going to see the consistency of the change of the mix. Really neat. just sits for about four or five minutes and we just repeat that process until we have a light trace so a light trace means when you dip this in you can trace a little bit on top this is still very liquefied so that is not ready so we're gonna let that sit for a few minutes and come back and do it again good morning a good day everyone uh, I'm coming to you from my basement uh, where we're going to do a batch of goat milk soap. So I have all the ingredients already uh, measured out and I'm just going to go over the recipe with you quick. This is for a energizing peppermint basil soap. Um, so this has um, lard, coconut oil, olive oil, grapeseed oil, castor oil, cocoa butter, the lye, uh, filtered water, which we will be substituting our goat milk for the water, uh, and then the essential oils of peppermint and basil. Um, so let's get to it. I'm so excited to share uh, my goat milking and goat making um, projects with you. So let's get started. Okay, we are back. Uh, first, I'll show you the, uh, the tallow, shea butter, and olive oil mix. This was uh, about a minute and a half in the microwave. You can see all that is melted now. So then I'm just gonna switch over. So here is our goat milk lime mixture. You can see it is really starting to melt and get nice and creamy so i'm going to set that back aside and then we're going to add our other oils to this 
Um, so these are the already liquid oils that do not need to be melted at all. So uh, we're gonna add our, this is the coconut oil. And for the coconut oil, there is nine ounces of coconut oil. I'll incorporate that in. And then we have uh, three ounces of grapeseed and three ounces of castor oil. So this is the grapeseed. I'm just gonna stir that in. And then our castor oil. Just mix that till it's all incorporated. So those little fatty deposits on the top, don't worry about those. Those are gonna get incorporated um, once we start the emulsifying of the uh, process. So as long as everything is pretty liquefied, we're good. So we're gonna set that aside. Give this another stir, we're almost melted here. So what you want is these two mixtures to be about the same temperature before you integrate them together. Um, so this is my infrared temperature and I'll try to do it from this way so you can see. So, so that uh, liquid oils and solids are reading about 108. So then our goat milk is only reading eh, 50, 50 ish, I would say. Um, so we have to wait till this cools down and this heats up. Uh, so you can speed that along if you want. You can add this to a hot water bath or you can add this to a ice water bath. Um, so I tend just to wait until um, all these are melted. And then I just keep stirring this just so those solids don't form a total glaze on top. Um, and then I'll just come back to it. So we're gonna leave this alone for a few minutes and we'll come back once everything is ready to be put together. Okay, we're on our second blending. Another minute. Sometimes it takes two, three, four, depends on the weather and the mix you're using. looking fabulous. All right, so let's see what we got now. So as you can see, that actually is doing a light trace. So that only took two times. So from here, now we're going to add our oils so our saponification has occurred. You don't want to put your oils in before that occurs or that chemical process will actually destroy um, your therapeutic benefits of your oils. So let me go grab oils and we'll do that part. All right, so we have our basil oil. Uh, basil is a great one for uplifting the mood um, has some great anti-inflammatory properties, um, just a great all-around uh, pick-me-up. Um, and then we are going to do that the camera there, peppermint. And peppermint is a phenomenal one to uh, boost your respiratory, uh, clear your airways. Um, again, a good uplifting of the mood. Um, so those are the two that we are going to add to this soap and it's half a 
um, half an ounce, half an ounce, yes, half an ounce. So it's about a bottle of each. So we're just gonna dump those right in there. And again, mix it well. <laughs> Oh, this actually smells heavenly. Oh, it's clearing my airways. And for a little added fun, we're going to add some dried herbs, about a tablespoon of basil um, to this mix. And just see what kind of uh, texture that that will give the soap. Um, so again, we're just going to put that in there. Who knows, I might like it, might not. There we go. Let's get all that goodness off of there. And then we are ready to mold. So we have our silicone mold that has been working really well for us. Um, so it actually has this nice solid uh, frame and then the silicone mold goes uh, right in that. So nothing slips on it. And we're just gonna lay it like that. And what I like to do is put the spatula here um, and you pour against the spatula and then you don't get any um, air bubbles. Um, so you just kind of pour away. And this mold and recipe would will give you uh, about 11 to 12, depending on how you cut, uh, four ounce bars of soap. So now I'll just go all through there. And again, we don't want to waste any of this precious. So we'll scoop all that. Again, good thing for the silicone spatula. Oh, I wish you guys could smell this. It smells amazing. So now just kind of straighten this out a little bit. Make sure it's all in the corners. You can get, you know, pretty uh, fancy and swirly and whatnot. We're just going to let this one have a nice, just level top on it. Uh, and bang it a couple times just to make this, make sure there's no air bubbles down there. And then take a, just a little piece of paper towel and clean off your edges. Make sure those don't have any soap because when you unmold, that will kind of not be pretty when it rips off. And then we wrap this up, literally, and it will sit for 24 hours. So we have our cotton blanket. Get rid of this stuff. We just place that in the middle. I have this cardboard cover just in case any of the blanket were to hit the sides. We don't want the soap having any marks on it. So then you just kind of wrap this up. And 
and this needs to set for 24 hours. So now I just kind of leave it alone. I put it on my freezer down in the basement so nothing can disturb it. And we'll check back with you in 24 hours. Okay, we are back for the unveiling of our basil peppermint soap. Um, so this is sat for 24 hours. Um, so we're just going to uncover it. And there's our little cardboard cover so nothing stuck to it. That's what it is looking like right now. It's still a little, little damp, but it is so humid here. Um, not too worried about that. That'll dry out in the curing process. Um, so now we just flip the mold over, take out the wood base, and I just peel off the silicone mold. So I just kind of lift like that. And there you go. We lost just one little corner piece. Put that over there. So I have this great um, divider to cut the soaps nice and evenly. Um, you can do it by hand. I just like to make sure mine are all uniformed. Um, so I like to use this. Um, so easy. You just push it to the back. And you can either do a straight cut with this, or you can do like a ribbon pattern. Um, I'm gonna do the straight cut on this soap just because that's what I feel like it wants to be, is a nice straight cut. Uh, so you just go down all the notches and you, sometimes you get a soap out. So you just keep on going until you're You've cut all your soap. These are going to come out as I cut them, so that's even easier. So as you can see, these notches make it so much easier to make sure all your soap is the same size, um, which is great if you're going to sell or give to family, friends. It just looks so much neater. I just want to show you guys how those little basil flakes went throughout the soap. I think it came out pretty. So let's finish off cutting. And that way you get as many bars as you can out of each loaf because you're not wasting anything. And you don't have bars that are one size and another. So then we just move this back over to the beginning. And you, oh, I always end up with this little piece. So this is the piece that I'll do my trial on and make sure I like the soap. Um, so now this needs to cure for about a month. So that's the, disadvantage of making your own soap but you just keep making until you uh, and you always have a batch curing while you have another batch ready to go so this will stand up right so as much surface area is exposed to the air as possible like so and there you go so I have it marked uh, basil peppermint with the date so I know when these are going to be ready to package and uh, ready to sell and hand to people so we got two four six eight ten bars um, with this little extra piece which will be my sample piece for my shower um, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this uh, soap making video and we'll tune in again for another another one soon